Hello everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I got a new video for you. I haven't had a lawn to take care of in a while, so I started to get the itch for digging in some dirt. So I've got a new project here that we're going to be working on. I ordered this microgreens kit from this company online. So we're going to be trying to grow an indoor garden. But first, we're going to open it up like a crazy person here. Let's see what's in the box. I've opened enough packages with different knives, I have not shown you guys my hatchet yet. Because that's what we're all about. Okay, let's see what we got here. So I ordered a kit that came with some seeds. And... We've got a variety here. We've got buckwheat and pea sprouts we've got beets and the last one is cilantro so we got a quite the variety and when it comes to growing microgreens indoors we're going to be growing it in soil first so i've got oh there's one more bag of seed here big bag and i think this is sunflower seeds actually this is like a three pound bag or something Yes, sunflower seeds are very large, and when you grow microgreens, you pack the seeds in very, very densely in a small area. So besides the seeds, we've also got pH test strips to make sure that our water is balanced properly. They've got a little guide in here that kind of tells you what your pH is supposed to be, and I believe it is supposed to be slightly on the acidic side, so if you've got alkaline water, make sure you balance it properly. Our grow medium is going to be these bricks. These are basically compressed pucks of soil here. Otherwise known as coconut coir is what all the cool kids use in the microgreen industry. So I figured I'd try this first, but I also wanted to try like some organic soil maybe going forward. But this is basically just like an inert soil. It's not really soil at all. It's just like a growing medium for the seeds to latch onto. And you only really put a couple of inches of soil in here. And it also came with some trays. So I've got trays that we're going to uh, expand this in a big container. Basically just mix this brick here with some water. And it expands to like five times as big. So we're going to do that in the garage so we don't make a mess. And then we're going to go over the start to finish. But I'm going to read the instructions first to make sure I do everything properly. Guys, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you got any questions as this video goes on. This will be the fun part here. So I got this brick. And we can see that this is what we're going to grow our stuff in. You can get a bag of just any old organic potting soil at your local big box store if you want to. But... This came with the kit. It was, I don't know, this thing only weighs like eight ounces maybe, so apparently it expands to eight liters of soil. All you have to do is add water to it. So let's just cut this guy open. Let's see how this works. It's just this dry, powdered brick, basically. I am. I got a fun idea. Let me do a time lapse video of me pouring water on this. In case you're wondering what coco coir is, it is a soil amendment very similar to the function of peat moss. It's good at holding lots and lots of water. You can see this just soaking this water up like a sponge. Look at that, I'm just pouring tons of water on it. it. Just soaks it right up. So that is how you can pack it into a brick, in an eight ounce brick, and it expands into eight liters of soil pretty easily. I mean, I might do this a couple of times to add more water, and in case you noticed, I am using a filtered water because I don't want any chlorine in my organic microgreens. So we're trying to keep this as neat and clean as possible. I might bust this up, add a little more water. Oh, 
okay. I've got about three inches of soil in here, so I didn't want it to be super tall because I want to leave enough space for the plant to actually grow up and everything. I did have two different types of trays here, so the bottom tray is completely solid. The top tray has holes in it, so you're going to actually put two trays on top of each other and add a couple cups of water to the bottom tray here, and then it'll actually bottom water. So once the roots actually get down into the soil here, it'll actually suck up water from the bottom tray. This would prevent mold from getting into your crop here in the house. So we don't have a lot of air circulation like we would outside, so that's definitely a concern. I'm also soaking the seeds in water for a couple of hours, so depending on the type of seed that you're trying to grow, sunflower seeds that I'm going to start with here, specifically called for soaking for a few hours. I'm going to do that. We're going to strain this out and then put the seeds down. I've got about three ounces of seed in here. Two to three ounces of seed should be enough to cover a 10 inch by 20 inch tray here. So you want it to be nice and thick. And once this is done soaking, I'll put them in there and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I let my seeds soak for about an hour in a glass of water, strain it out. And I just spread the seeds out and try to make them as even as possible. You can see the seed density that I've got here. It's laid down pretty thick in some spots, but that's okay because microgreens are supposed to grow in really thick. You get a nice dense crop then. So the next thing to do, contrary to popular belief, is we're not going to give this light right away. So if you have a grow light or something, now is not the time to use it. No, we are going to take another tray and simply place it on top of that tray. Now... Some people like to put weights on here and kind of compress the seed down. Anything to get seed to soil contact is really going to help with germination. As you know in my grass seeding videos, it's the same thing. Higher germination rates is better seed to soil contact and keeping things moist. So you want to keep that pressed in here. You could put like a book on it or something if you want to. But what you're going to do is you're just going to leave this like this for about a day or two. Come back to it just to check to make sure everything's still moist and everything. So... You know, if you do need to add water, you're not going to put water in the bottom yet. I am just going to take a spray bottle. Lightly mist. And just like what I did with peat moss with grass seed, it doesn't need to be totally saturated, but the color will actually change. It'll get darker when it's actually wet, this cocoa coir, kind of similar to peat moss, when it starts to get like a lighter color, you know it's dried out, so then you need to add water. But we don't need a lot right now, otherwise we can get mold issues, so we're just gonna go ahead and cover this up. Remember I said no light for the first couple days, even after it germinates, which should be just a couple of days with this type of seed. We're going to just take a peek under here and we're gonna leave it blacked out. For the first couple days of germination and as the seed starts to germinate it's just going to start growing and it's going to push this up as the plant grows and once we get to that stage then we can take this top tray off and then expose it to light where everything will get really green so stick around it's going to be a couple days and we'll see how this process goes all right it has been exactly seven days since i seeded those sunflower seeds you can see a little bit poking through now i did have this container over the top of it for a short blackout period so now that everything has started to grow with no lights we can start exposing it to light let's take a look and i am impressed with how high this grew in just a week look at that so these seeds will eventually fall off just on their own. You can just kind of brush the top and the sunflower seeds will come off on their own. But um, I'm going to get this underneath the light and I do have a grow light. Otherwise, if you don't have one of those, just put it under a windowsill and, you know, it'll start to green up after that. So it's yellow because it has not had any sunlight at all. So that's why it's like this. It really took root pretty good, it looks like. So, you know, once we get it exposed to light for a couple days, it's really going to take off. Now, right next to this, I did plant some buckwheat as well, a week apart. So, we're going to see what that looks like as well. That should grow pretty fast, I think, also. And we're not growing too much stuff at the same time, so that way I can kind of eat this as we go throughout the week, once it's fully mature, and then this stuff should start coming in right at the right time when I'm when I've used all this stuff up. And here's what my light situation looks like. This is just a cheap LED light I got off of Amazon. It was like 30 bucks. Eh, it's better than nothing. I also have it in front of a window here. So 
On the end here, I've got some romaine lettuce, which obviously didn't take very well. I don't know why it's looking so sad, so I'll probably rip that up and try a different method to grow it. Maybe I'll put some weight on it and black it out like I did with the sunflower seeds. This stuff is onions, green onions. Those are growing in pretty good. Over here we've got red kale. I'm very happy with the results there. And on the end here, this is, I gotta look at my label, rosemary. So we've got just a tiny bit there. The rosemary does take a long time to germinate and grow. I grew rosemary in an herb container a couple years ago. I just remember it took a very long time. So this was actually covered for a few days as well. So that's why it's looking kind of flat and sad. So now that we're getting a little bit of exposure to light, this stuff should really take off as well. All right, it's been exactly two weeks since I planted these sunflower seeds and look at that, it's looking gorgeous. I cannot believe how lush and thick this got. I already kind of started to cut into it and eat some of it. I just use the scissors and cut off some, but it's really crunchy and delicious. I like it. Grow light is doing good there. That's doing its job. I did plant some buckwheat too, so that started to come in pretty good as well. This has been a week and it's already, I don't know, uh, like five inches tall. So it's doing really good as well. So that's how you grow microgreens. Uh, just basically plant your seeds super dense, cover them up for a few days, keep the seeds moist, just like growing grass or anything else really in the garden. And the stuff grows up super fast. As soon as it's a couple inches high, you can go ahead and uncover it and expose it to light. Just keep everything moist and not overly saturated, but just wet enough that it doesn't dry out. And you should be all set and ready to go within two weeks, I think. Guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you got any comments, leave them below. Until next time, thanks for watching.